Hola hermanos y hermanas y bienvenidos. Hello everyone and welcome to this very special, very first virtual NEA Human and Civil Rights Award. I want to thank all of you for tuning in to this very special event where we usually get all gussied up. So I put some, I put some bling on here. Um, we miss being together. So when we were planning this event, no one, uh, least of all me, would have guessed that COVID-19 would not be the biggest topic in the headlines. What knocked a pandemic off the front page was the same thing that years ago brought our own union to see that our work could not be successful until we faced and acknowledged the reality that racial and social justice was still a dream denied in our country. And across this nation, we've been stunned, but not surprised. At the murder of George Floyd, we were stunned by the cruelty, we were stunned by the police officer's calm face. But no, I, I don't think we were surprised because as these atrocities have been videotaped and gone viral time after time, political leaders have done nothing to prevent the next outrage. Political leaders such as the current occupant of the White House, for instance, have made matters worse by blaming victims, by punishing those who so justly were enraged that they took to the streets in protests for justice against the oppression they've suffered as black Americans since the first kidnapped and enslaved Americans embarked on the shores of the Commonwealth of the Colony of Virginia over 400 years ago. And that brings us to this annual event, the NEA Human and Civil Rights Award. It's a celebration of those who will not be silent, for those righteous angels amongst us who will act, no matter who pushes back, no matter who attacks them, no matter how inconvenient or uncomfortable their protests and actions make powerful people feel. This event began in another historic time, in the 1960s, as segregated schools were being integrated under protest in many communities. Then, the NEA was an association that re represented mostly white teachers. And the ATA, the American Teachers Association, was an association that represented mostly black teachers in segregated schools. In the 60s, we merged to form one powerful integrated association of educators that would serve all educators and would serve all their students. And we agreed in that merger that we would celebrate every year those who had distinguished themselves in the fight for racial and social justice, that we would lift up their names and tell their stories as inspirational examples of courage. This time, amid a pandemic of lives lost to COVID-19, but against an even greater pandemic of lives lost to racism. We come together virtually with our theme, Together We Rise. I think it's the perfect theme for this year's ceremony as we see the courageous actions from educators, community members, our students, community organizations, and the work of our HCR award winners themselves. We're navigating our way uh, through it all without any form of leadership from the White House. That's just an empty space left by a tiny hearted man who thought a show of military violence against peaceful protesters would silence demands for justice. He silenced no one because this is not a moment this is a movement of black lives, white allies, immigrant communities, Republicans, and Democrats, and independents. They were all marching. People of faith, including people who continue to have faith in the poetry of the principles of equality and justice for all, the principles we fight for. So we celebrate tonight 
But tonight is about inspiring all of us to action. I keep saying this, you're gonna keep hearing it. We must elect a new president of the United States. But this isn't about one person. We have to elect men and women all the way down the ballot who will uphold the obligation to protect and defend the rights of every person to the primary and fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There are gonna be elections for sheriff, county council, mayors, governors, Congress, at every level, local, state, and national. You've got to use your voice as an educator, as a neighbor, as a parent, as someone who loves this nation's children. You have to be the people who come together to elect those who will heal and strengthen our communities. I hope you'll go to strongpublicschools.org, find out how you can get more involved in being part of the sweeping changes we need in November. But don't do it right now, because tonight, right here, you're going to hear and you're going to learn about 11 phenomenal award winners from across the nation. They are making a huge difference for public education, but also improving the lives of our students inside and outside the classroom. They are lifting up the work of justice as the foundation of building something better in our communities and in our country. Right here on this very site, you're gonna be able to read and hear from our award winners. You can pass around the links. You can, you can visit these pages. But we wanna thank them for their incredible work tonight. As we honor them, we're also celebrating all of you that thought enough to join us tonight. I'm so proud of how in the most frightening time of global crisis, you keep showing up. You show up in powerful, creative ways to support your students, their families, and your communities. I wish I had a trophy to give every one of you, but I also know that you do what you do without expecting a prize. You do it like breathing. You don't even think about it. And because of you, the educators of America, the world is a little bit better place. So we're thanking them, but I thank you. And now, I have the pleasure of turning the program over to someone whose values and whose commitment to NEA's mission are second to none. More than understanding the need for racial and social justice, she carries these words in her heart. She works every day to make them a reality. She is a public education justice warrior, and she is my friend. Please welcome NEA Executive Director, Kim Anderson. <laughs> 